all of our day ones. Thank you for tapping back in. We missed you. For all of our new, our, our new friends who tapped in for the first time, we appreciate you rocking with Last Supper Society. My name is Ryan Royster. And I'm Byron Hughes. And we are the founders of Last Supper Society. We treat every meal like it's our last, especially when it's season three premiere. So everybody, we got some bright new shiny toys we're playing with. We're gonna show you some new new today. We're gonna have a lot of fun. But before we get started, we want to get your weekend started right. We want to get a drink in your hands. So we are going to kick it off with our boys at True Laurel to let you know what we're sipping on. Nicholas, what's going on, man? Oh, Thank man. you for having us at True Laurel for the sip. We're excited about this episode. It's the premiere. This is a special one. How about you introduce yourself and this amazing spot that we're in right now? My name is Nicholas Torres. I'm the bar owner director of True Laurel here in San Francisco. Uh, I'm an SF native, uh, raised around the Bay Area, um, and I've been in the hospitality and many other industries for quite some time. My past uh, experience from here was actually a Michelin star restaurant where I really got to experience working really closely with uh, California and local produce and working closely with my farmers. And I really got into it and sort of the ad idea for True Laurel came about because I liked the techniques and the care and thought that we were putting into our food and drinks in my prior experience but I wanted something that where anyone could walk through the door and sort of be a part of it. To be a bar of discussion, you have to be a place for discussion, which means that people can come here and feel comfortable and want to come back. So on the menu tonight, we are reimagining some steakhouse vibes and putting our own twist on it. So tell us about the drinks we're making tonight and yeah. the creativity behind it. Um, so when I think steakhouse, you know, I think of either starting off with like a really cold, probably shaken martini, um, or even shaken uh, Manhattan. Those are sort of like the two spiritist drinks I really like. One sort of a twist on a martini. Uh, it's definitely a lighter approach, a little more wine forward. And then the other is a play on a Martinez, which is sort of like the gin uh, Manhattan. Cool, we're excited. Um, which one do you want to start with? I think let's start with like the, the heavy one. Uh, the first ingredient we have actually is uh, some classic uh, sweet vermouth. Then we're using some local gin actually made across the bay in Alameda. And then our special ingredient here is um, our house-made coconut washed whiskey. We basically take some beautiful organic coconut oil and we do a pan fry on some coconut flakes, which we then infuse what we call a fat wash onto our whiskey. It takes about 24 hours. Uh, a little bit of water, um, a little bit of uh, maraschino liqueur, and a couple dashes of bitters. Uh, then one of our final ingredients in this drink, which is a big influence on it, is uh, these baby redwood tips that we go out and forage. To finish off the drink, we're gonna start with a beautiful, nice big cube. Give it a little spritz of absinthe. And this is the In the Pines Under the Palms. That sounds amazing. What else you got for us? Cool. So uh, our martini take here, I call this drink the stock market. Really, it's sort of a twist on a 50-50 with a whole bunch of other ingredients in it. So we're starting off with a little bit, um, or not a little bit, a lot of it, of sherry. And then we have our gin for our martini. You gotta have a nice gin. We want to use like a, some good juniper here, so we're just going with a classic London dry style of gin. We then have a touch of Blanc Vermouth. Uh, we have a little bit of sweetener here. This is actually a chamomile syrup, which is gonna sort of give this uh, florality to the drink and really tie things together. And our beautiful ingredient, this pink ingredient here, is a uh, pickled chard stem. Then we're gonna finish the whole drink off with some fresh celery juice coming from Green Thumb Organics. In the stock market, we're gonna give a stir to meld all the flavors together. We're gonna serve this up. All right, I'm ready to sip on something, Great. so uh, let's get it popping. All right, so Ryan, you're about to enjoy the In the Pines Under the Palms. And Byron, you're holding on to the stock market. Uh, I have a little bit of rosé right here. Hey. Cheers. Get it how you live. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. This is it right here. Third. 
That was our boy Nick Torres at True Laurel letting us know what True Laurel is all about. Recently uh, selected as one of the Bay Area's top 88 restaurants. So absolutely tap in with True Laurel whenever you are in the mission in San Francisco. What you see my man doing right here, Chef V, he's making a couple cocktails. Get but the logo You know what? Get that, get that True Laurel. Little true uh, Laurel. Get that True Laurel whoop right there. There he is. Got the little whoopty whoop. Um, he's pouring these cocktails, but these aren't for us. These are for our friends who are dining with us tonight. So new for season three is you can dine with us. Live studio audience, dining with the kids, fully ser full service. So you guys are gonna have the full dinner experience, drinks, the meal cooked by Chef B right here, Chef Boy RB. Uh, I never said that. <laughs> I never said that. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so we have Monique and Amber out there right now enjoying some cocktails on the beautiful patio of H16. So I bet you didn't. Uh, I'm gonna go grab some wine from the first. If you guys made uh, another observation, we're not at Ryan's crib anymore. So, first off, Byron won't be making fun of my crib anymore because we ain't at it. Um, but we are at H16 right now. And. This is the beautiful kitchen at A16. It's popping and we're having some fun. Um, you guys, again, like I said, we missed you. We're gonna get into some things really quick, but I want to talk about this episode and a little bit of the inspiration behind this episode. Um, and this is the South African Steakhouse. And I'm gonna let the chef tell you a little bit about the inspo behind this, which was a collab also with Chef Jeff Davis at True Laurel. What's up with it? Um, before we get into that, there's much more important business to get into, which okay. is these two glasses of wine. Okay. Shout out Jess from True Laurel. She actually gifted us this bottle. Uh, and I'm so excited to drink it because of the way she described it. So shout out Jay Money. Shout out Jay Money. We're going to enjoy this. Yeah. And get a little lubrication before yeah, I uh, sure. start using the Season mouth motor. Yeah. Mmm. Mm. Oh. Yeah. That's nice. That's a real, uh, that real whoop right there actually very delicious thank you Jess um, okay so uh, the menu today the menu today the menu today so we got into True Laurel um, there was a, a bit of back and forth mm -hmm. about what we were gonna do about the menu um, and we kind of landed on this idea of America um, and what is classic to America um, and one of the th ideas that came up was the classic American steakhouse so uh, one of my goals on this season is to figure out where the line is drawn between things that we know now that aren't typically black or African and trying to figure out where we can draw a line between them. Okay. So maybe th there's not a clear line between these two things, but we drew one today. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is uh, our South African take on a s classic American steakhouse. Okay. You have the exact things that you would get in a uh, American steakhouse, a steak, uh, baked potato, and creamed greens, uh, okay. the, the classics. Um, but we've just decided to make them a little bit blacker. So um, I'm going to jump into doing what we always do, which is going through our ingredient list. Uh, this is one of the only two copies that came out. Uh, as you guys know at home, uh, we have gone almost paperless. We're saving and paper now, y'all. <laughs> we are here saving paper, y'all. Um, and uh, we, we put it on digital. Um, I worked on that actually today, maybe 17 minutes ago. Uh, we finished it. So um, let's go through the ingredients and just this kind of intro part first. Um, so let's go through what's in the bag. Number one, the beef. So uh, if you guys actually read the instructions, then your beef should be salted like mine. It should be sitting out on a plate at room temperature. This beef came from Cream Co. Uh, they're located in Oakland, California. Uh, super dope purveyors of excellent beef. Um, this is actually a company that True Laurel works with uh, regularly, and that was one of the things they brought into this collaboration. Super happy to work with this beef, um, and can't wait for you guys to taste it. Number two. Let's pull it out of the bag here, shall we? Mm -hmm. I'm reaching in here. Let's, let me just, let's just take some of this stuff out. Number two. Uh, number two, you guys are probably wondering what the heck Binchotan is. Binchotan oil. So binchotan is a binchotan is a uh, Japanese wood, um, and is what's used for making yakitori. Um, and it's a wood that burns super hot. Either, either way, it doesn't matter what the heck I'm talking about right now. 
Uh, the way that this Bicheltown oil is made is by catching these logs on fire, literally lighting them over a flame until they turn white hot, and then putting them, putting them in the oil. So it infuses into that oil, you get this super smoky oil. The idea behind that was because we're not grilling, like a typical braai in South Africa, which is usually over an open flame with a grill, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we can try and replicate some of those flavors, that smokiness that comes from the grill, the wood. Uh, we've replicated it in the wood. Same thing with the spices. There's a bit of smokiness in that, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, number tres. What is number three in here? Okay, the braai finishing salt. So guys, this is special salt. Um, it's not just kosher or anything like that. It's actually called Malden, Malden sea salt. We use this in the restaurant industry to finish things. Um, it's got nice huge crystals in there which give a nice texture to the finished product. Um, but also just delicious salt. I would suggest just taking a little bit and just trying it. Um, so we uh, just literally just mix that with the braai spice. Uh, take it, you know, open it up, give it a sniff, and you can smell the braai spice, which we will get to in a second as well. So, number four, what the heck is number four in here? Miso maple butter. Shout out Chef Jeff, he showed me this technique, how we're going to be making the potatoes today. It's just delicious. It's miso, it's maple, it's butter, and a little bit of apple cider vinegar as well uh, to kind of balance out the sweetness and the intenseness of all the other ingredients. This is going to make those sweet potatoes shine. Real nice. Backflips. Backflips on the sweet potato, off toppy. Uh, number five, the chives. You're probably wondering, why, why did they send me cut chives? <laughs> well, because in order to have proper chives, and the ones that look like the ones that were on the picture, if you guys saw the picture um, that led up to this episode, you got to have an extremely sharp knife. Uh, and then after that, they have to be taken care of the right way. Usually when I see people cut chives, uh, they're using, a, you know, they might be using a sharp, a sharp knife, but they don't take care of them the right way. That's why you see this little paper towel in here. It wicks off the moisture and keeps the chives nice and crisp. Uh, they tend to give off a lot of moisture when they're cut, uh, so we try to eliminate that. And they give off even more if, they're, if it's a dull knife, too. So we, these are proper chives. We prevented you from boofing the chives. You didn't boof the chives. <sighs> what number was that, bro? Five? Four? Five? Okay, five. Six. Uh, cauliflower bechamel. So bechamel, a uh, classic French uh, mother sauce, one of the mother sauces. Uh, mm -hmm. If you go to culinary school, you learn about this. Otherwise, you probably would never know about it. But it's a cream-based sauce. Uh, we made it a little differently. Shout out to Chef Jeff for this one as well. Um, typically, it's, it's cream that's thickened with the roux. Um, add a bay leaf, add a little bit of thyme, add some nutmeg in there, and then you have this, this beautiful, delicious, uh, thickened cream sauce. Instead of adding a roux, which is adding gluten, adding flour and butter and more fat, um, we actually thickened it with cauliflower. So we cook the cauliflower uh, in the cream for you know, a long time until it starts to break down, and then uh, pureed it really nicely and strained it off and gave it to you guys. So uh, there's no butter, no, no flour in this. It's just naturally thickened with the, uh, with the cauliflower. Naturally thick. What's up? <laughs> Number seven, naturally thick. Uh, number seven, we got the crispy shallots. Um, I wish I could say I made these, but I didn't. Because making crispy shallots for 150 plus people is quite a task. So uh, we just go to Asian market and grab <laughs> the perfectly made crispy shallots and just distribute them to you guys. I can smell it as soon as you took the top off. It's so awesome. good. As soon as you pop the top, I mean, you smell it and they're just made perfectly. And I feel like, you know, people will enjoy this. And if you like these, you can literally go to the Asian market. It's like three bucks for like a gallon of this stuff. What else do we got? Long-winded intro here, huh? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we got the collard greens. Um, if you look like me and your skin is brown, you probably know what these are. Uh, and <laughs> you've probably seen them being prepped in your kitchen before, but this is, this is our version of the steakhouse. So instead of using cream spinach, uh, we're gonna do cream collard greens. Get the same effect. Wow, collards. Lastly, almost lastly, the papas. That's Spanish for potatoes. Mm -hmm. uh, we have these tiny little cute little Japanese sweet potatoes. Um, one of my favorite sweet potatoes to work with. They have this beautiful purple skin and just the flavor of it is just delicious. Um, luckily, you know, I, I thought it was bad that we didn't get bigger ones, but we got these tiny ones uh, and I think that we'll be able to make them beautiful uh, in a different way than we would have a normal giant baked sweet potato. We'll get into that later. Also in that same bag, you guys have a bunch of thyme and um, another ingredient that's interesting because it kind of calls to the restaurant that we're collaborating with. This is California Bay Laurel. So when you guys make soups and stuff at home, uh, maybe your recipe calls for uh, bay leaf. This is a bay leaf, uh, except for it's fresh. 
The flavor that you get off of this is completely different than the dried one, and I think it's super important to make the distinction between dried and fresh in this case, and it's going to make uh, the potato do numbers. Do numbers with it. Uh, okay, that's all of our ingredients. I'm just throwing stuff everywhere. We're in a new kitchen, guys. I'm not in Ryan's kitchen anymore, so excuse me if I'm trying to figure out my uh, footing and where to put stuff, but you know, it is pretty nice here, and I will Very say, nice. Cheers to you, Ryan, for setting up a wonderful apartment at your spot, but this, this is the move right here. It's, we are no longer in Ryan's kitchen, you guys. We got Fannie Lou and Angela Davis in the back, too. Mm. Shout out one time. It was Fannie Lou Hamer's birthday this week. Happy birthday, Shadi. Mm -hmm. Let's get into what you'll need. Um, number one, heavy bottom pan. I suggest a cast iron. Um, it's for making steak. We want to take our steak seriously. We need a pan that's going to hold up to a high temperature cooking. Um, and we might actually set the smoke alarm off here at uh, age 16 <laughs> because we weren't able to take it down. We literally earlier. tried to dismantle it. It and started talking to us. Disconnect it was not it was not happening. It started talking um, to us. So we're just gonna rock with it. So if you guys hear a smoke alarm, don't worry. It's not an actual fire. <laughs> um, it's just we're cooking at high temp today, and it's important to use the proper vessel to cook at those temperatures. Okay, number two, my my stuff's all Absolutely. cut off. But I think I know what it says. Uh, number two, I think I said, guys, you'll need a pot that can fit. I just burped as I'm talking. Excuse me. You'll need a pot that can fit all your greens um, and a nice amount of water so we can blanch the greens first. And then we'll pour the water out and finish the greens with the bechamel inside the same pot. So you only need one pot. Does need to have a lid. Make sure you got a lid on that thing. Uh, number three. What's number three? Can someone help me out here? No? Anybody? Is it cut off on those instructions too? See, this is why we had to go paperless, you guys. It's because printing stuff, it just doesn't work out all the time. <laughs> Ryan's going to pull it up. I'm going to pull it up. Number five, we'll skip to number five. Uh, you should have a strainer. Mine's already in the sink, ready to go so that we can strain uh, the, the collard greens when they're done uh, blanching. Uh, you should have preheated your oven to 425 degrees. And you should have gotten your water to a boil. And you should have taken your steak out and seasoned it. And if you did all those things, then I think Three, are you talking about what you need? Foil, yeah, what you need. Here we go, here we go. Strainer. Sheet pan. Oh, sheet pan. We'll need a sheet pan to kind of just place the potatoes on um, after they're wrapped up so they can go in the oven, they don't leak or anything like that. And then also you'll need some aluminum foil, which under my handy dandy. Wait, where's it at? Here it is. Oh, wait, I, I think I got it. Look like a magician, bro. <laughs> you'll need some aluminum foil. <laughs> uh, TV magic right there. I like to get nice big squares so I know I can wrap it tightly and fit all my ingredients in there. The potatoes are pretty small, so they probably won't need this much, but I kind of overdid it, but a little bit extra won't, won't hurt. So you'll need one piece of foil for each sweet potato that you have. <sighs> how are we doing out? How, how are our guests doing on the, on the patio? Are you guys good okay. over there? Cheers, 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 cheers. Yeah, get a cheers to Amber and Ooh. Mo out there. Mo's boots are fierce. Can, the, do we, can we get a shot of the boots? There's no missing hey. the boots. Hey! There's no missing One the boots. One time with the boots. Okay. Boots popping. Those were not made for walking. Those were made for flossing. I think without further ado. Oh, we were talking about new features uh, for season three here. Yeah, what else? I we got, got a couple over here features? behind my handy dandy, uh, handy dandy stove over here. And I think because I got through that long winded intro. Okay. I deserve a little bit of applause. Okay. Okay. So, uh, without further ado, guys, we're going to get started with this recipe. Um, the first thing we're going to work on is the potato. So let's get our potatoes out of the bag and our foil laid out. I've got two here. Do we not have any more potatoes in the fridge? We only had two? We had a bunch at the crib. There was like 17 potatoes left over at least. Yeah, there was. I, I wasn't told to bring them. No kidding. All right. Sure. I, he's right, guys. I did not say it. So, uh, oven's going 425. We're going to get our potatoes ready. So let's get one at a time. So what I like to do is kind of turn the uh, foil into a diagonal and start at the bottom of the diagonal, closest to you. Couple sprigs of thyme, single bay leaf, pinch of salt, yeah? And a little bit of uh, olive oil or whatever oil you prefer to work with. It was, it was how much salt? Just a, you know, just a, you know, a little whoop. Just a little whoop. Just a little <laughs> whoop here and there. A little whoopy. Uh, now we're going to take that corner, guys. Place that potato on top. And actually, you know what? I thought about this on the way here. I was thinking about how to make this technique a little bit. I mean, just make it work a little bit better. 
guys. Oh, no knife. Guys, we're going to we're going to go we're, we're calling an audible right here. What I want you to do is take a knife and give just a little incision, maybe a quarter of the way through the potato, just like that, okay? And place that cut side down. We're gonna place it into the herb. So hopefully, if this works the way I think it will, uh, we'll get that herb flavor coming into the potato as it's cooking. Wrap it up like a burrito. That's uh, short for burrito. <laughs> and onto our sheet pan. <laughs> doing great, guys. You guys are doing great, okay? Shout out again to the True Laurel crew. They were just so hospitable. I mean, I, I, I was offered coffee, wine when I got there. And dealing with Byron's not easy, let me tell you. So <laughs> shout out to Nicholas Torres, who is the owner and uh, bar director who you guys saw on the set. Uh, they do amazing stuff, uh, both in the kitchen and behind the bar. That whole team is dope over there. So uh, make sure when you guys are in the mission, not even just when you're there, make a trip, plan a trip to go out there. They have outdoor seating for you guys as well. Um, uh, they have been grinding it out to make sure that they are serving you guys and, and giving you that same quality even uh, through the pandemic. So uh, make sure you guys tap in with them. True Laurel SF on the gram. And order the patty melt. Patty melt. Patty Pro melt tip. Fire. Yeah. Patty melt. Patty melt fire. Hey, and if you guys aren't following us on the gram, you're tripping. So uh, at Last Supper Society on the gram, uh, always find us at Last at LastSupperSociety.com. That's that new new the website, and like and subscribe to the YouTube too. All right, guys. So I put my potatoes on my sheet pan. Uh, they're in the oven. We're gonna forget about those for a little while. It's gonna take a while to cook them. Uh, probably a little bit shorter because they're they're so small. Typically, when we do baked potatoes, are with a giant russet or like a big potato. So um, we'll keep an eye on those and make sure they don't over, excuse me, overcook. For those uh, who did not uh, check out the pre-service this week, can you tell us a little bit about that bry spice? Oh, the bry spice. I didn't even talk about it. Huh? Ah, I want to hear it. We're going to keep this. And check so, out the pre-service too. We have it on our Instagram right now. That is the official sneak peek into the creative process, into the uh, dish for the week. So leading up to each episode, we will drop the pre-service for you guys. This week was all focused on the bry spice, which is uh, what's really making the steak do backflips and bringing out that South African Zulu flavor too. Yes, so sir. Yes, sir. So that's about it. this bry spice um, started as an idea um, that was literally, uh, you know, inspired directly from the South African bry, right? The bry, which is this occasion of grilling, you're grilling meats, and there's a typical spice that they use called bry spice. We use that as a start to the, the seasoning that we're using. Um, and then Chef Jeff had a ton of inspiration about it, and he was able to take it to the next level. So this one um, includes the flavor of uh, chilies. So in here is Jimmy Nardello peppers that have been fried, deep fried, um, until they get real crispy. And then you dehydrate them to get rid of a lot of that uh, oil and moisture. And then you puree it into a, or you blend it or buzz it into a powder. Uh, we mix it with a ton of different spices, uh, cumin, uh, nutmeg, allspice, uh, anise is in there. So you have this really robust spice blend on top of the already uh, African uh, bry spice, which is like dried onion, dried garlic, um, salt. So super special spice. I gave you guys a ton of this. We will li literally use like two pinches. So I hope that you figure out a use for this um, later on in life. Let me know if you figure anything out better to do with this. I think it would go great on the grill as well. Quick question from the audience. Is our water supposed to be boiling right now? Uh, yeah, let's get, it, let's get it to a boil. We want to have it at a boil. We're going to start working on our collards, and it's time to do the thing. OK, guys, so uh, collards are out. Uh, these have already been rinsed and washed. Uh, sorry I didn't include that in the instructions. It should just be a natural reaction. Uh, to getting fresh produce. Wash it, rinse it. There might be some uh, critters that are still existing on there. Uh, we want to get rid of all that stuff. So giant leaves here. The trick here is to separate the leaves from the stems. Uh, we want to keep them in kind of big pieces because of the knife skill tech or the knife technique that we're going to use to cut them down. So my technique is to kind of just break it off here a little bit at the stem and then you can grip the stem like this and just kind of slide your hand up gently and pull that stem out just like that. Now you got solo leaf, okay? We're gonna do that with all of them. I'll do it with you guys. I'll go uh, non-chef speed too, so we can just all stay at the same pace here.
And what I'm doing as I'm stripping them is just kind of arranging them in like an orderly fashion because we'll need to do that um, for the first step of the cutting process. And for you guys in the audience, we have no guests today for a reason. We want to interact with you guys. Make sure you guys get us your questions, whether they are about this specific meal or about what we've been up to, whatever it is, we want to connect with you guys. Um, so make sure you keep those questions coming. One of the questions that we got from our girl Rocky was, how do you get to the patio? If you want to get to the patio, it will be offered. It is a premium service. It will be offered uh, via Shopify every week. Um, it will be there very super, super extra limited seating. Um, so it's really first come first serve on that. So uh, the patio will be open and it's not even just the patio. You're going to see how the whole whoop evolves as the night goes, but the experience is crazy. The whoop evolves off top. Off top. All right, all the stems are separated. We're doing good here, guys. We are doing great. So the next step is to just kind of arrange them in a nice orderly fashion. We don't want to do too many at a time or well, I don't want you guys to do too many at a time because I want to make sure that we're cutting these right. So I'll probably do like half of them. And what I'm doing is just laying them out flat in uh, just, you know, kind of just lining them up, stacking them up. So let's stack them. You got a nice sharp knife, you could probably do half at a time. So I got one stack there. I'll do another stack here. And honestly, it's not that serious. Just kind of just break it up. Line them up. Chef, are the potatoes supposed to be in right now? Absolutely. Tanya was asking. Yes. Tanya, potatoes supposed to be in. The potatoes should have been in about in. five to eight minutes ago. Get them things in there, Tanya. But luckily they're small, so they will not take a while. And uh, guys, just walking into the kitchen, we have very special guests. Hey, He's going to bring some stuff for us. Uh, because all the, I'm, all I'm, in, my guy. I'm, I'm Byron and I forget everything. Guys, this is my sous chef, Matt, Matt Bicer right here. He's behind all of the prep that goes on behind uh, the cooking. Without this guy, I couldn't do it. Um, and this is, this is, this is, this is the wrong strainer. Yeah, I couldn't find it. Okay, I all right. Find it. I, I looked, okay, I looked well, Matt it. just went to my house to get some stuff that I forgot, so no fault <laughs> to him. But uh, we do have a strainer here, so, and some steak knives for our guests. We got a ramen strainer from oh, the ramen episode weird. from season two. I'm here rocking with the steak that. knives. We have some cheesecloth here too. I don't know what that's for, but. <laughs> Thanks, brother. <laughs> Chef, Chef Matt, everybody. Okay, so um, if you were attentive to the instructions and you also saw that there was a little YouTube tutorial on how to do this next knife technique, it's called chiffonade. What it means is little ribbons in French. And uh, the technique, which I'll show again, just in case you didn't watch the YouTube video, we're going to take this entire stack and we're just going to roll it up. Okay. Sorry, Mom. What's up, Dad? Burn one later. Uh, <laughs> okay, so now that we got it nice and tight and rolled up, we're going to just cut strips from this, all right? Shout out uh, Chef Matt also for bringing his Takeda knife. Can we get a close-up on this knife? Can you see these details? Takeda is a, is a super rare uh, knife maker in Japan, and his signature is this little heart on every blade. He puts this little heart on every blade. I don't know if the camera's going to be able to get that. Damn thing's 4K, but... You know, you don't, you never know. All right, we so this it. thing is going to slide right through these uh, collard greens. So let's cut them. Here we go, and we're just gonna cut little ribbons, guys. Not too thin, because we want to have it, you want to still have some texture to it. Okay, nice little ribbons. And then, get our bowl. Now when we just kind of loosen them up, we have these beautiful ribbons of collard greens, chiffonade, right? What, what's that step? word? Chiff anot. Chiff anot. C-I-H-I. Oh, don't try it. Don't try it. Don't try it. O-N-A-D-E-I. No, I got it. Don't I got it. I didn't go to culinary it. school, y'all, but I, I put my time in, all right? I know how to do a chiff anot. And spell it as well. Okay. All right, so chef speed on the next ones. Trying not to cut my fingers off with this katana that we have here. Beautiful. Maybe get a bigger bowl if you were uh, if you were doing this at home. This little bowl is not the business. Boom, got them cut. 
Next step is we're going to season them. We're going to massage the greens. Um, what this does is it kind of starts to break it down and whisk out some of the moisture of the greens, okay. uh, which helps with the cooking process. And it also seasons the greens. So we didn't put any salt in our boiling water uh, because we're going to salt them here. So let's go pretty generous on this. I would say one whoop, maybe like two whoops. Two whoops? Two whoops. Double whoop it. And then we're just going to get in there with our hands. Massage them. Give them a, just give them a, a rough, not, you know, this is like a Swedish. Is this a Swedish? Wine opener? Oh, what do you mean? No, I'm good. I would love some wine. I'm going to get up and grab some myself, guys. So I'm just, I'm massaging these guys. I'm just like kind of scrunching them up with my hands. All right. Getting that salt all around. Uh, you should probably have a bigger bowl than uh, I'm using. I should have a bigger bowl. But we're just going to kind of just break them down, scrunch them up a little bit. And you'll feel them start, you'll see them start to break up a little bit. They'll start to just kind of turn like dark green and just get kind of bruised. That's a good thing. The salt's going to be able to penetrate. And we're going to, again, get out some of that moisture that, uh, that they uh, contain when they're super raw. What is next? Okay, let's keep going. So we've massaged them. And now if you follow the instructions, uh, your water should be boiling. Mm -hmm. So we'll take the lid off. And we're just going to blanch these real quick. Uh, we just want to kind of get some of the cook to happen right now so that they turn bright green and that we can avoid, uh, avoid them turning like, like brown. Like a, no offense, mom. but. A lot of like the OG recipes of collard greens, they end up with like these brown colored collard greens. And it's been my mission uh, as a chef since I started doing this to uh, counteract that and just make sure that they're bright green and they look appetizing. Okay. So maybe the kids will like them. So nice and massaged. We're gonna go straight into our water. Shots fired at everybody's auntie right there <laughs> from Byron. Bad reviews coming. Blanch your, blanch your greens first, auntie. <laughs> Man, blanch them first, I'm just saying. Don't come for me, come for Byron, every auntie out there. So greens are in, we're just gonna blanch them real quick. And this is a quick process, you guys, super quick process. It goes into the hot water, and then it's gonna turn super vibrant, bright green. At that point, I'm gonna let them sit maybe another five to 10 seconds. Mine's already turning super bright green. See what's going on there, all right. Super bright green, super bright green, done. Now let's uh, strain them with this pasta strainer. Shout out uh, Ramen Shop. Ramen Shop, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we're just gonna get these guys, we're gonna evacuate them from this hot water so they stop cooking. Get your, get your greens out, get them strained. I'm getting a little nervous about this smoke alarm, honestly. I can't even front with you. Hey, don't put it out. Don't put it out in the universe. It's out there, brother. Don't put it out there. Oh, it's out there. We set it off last night, just FYI, in case you guys are wondering what I'm worried about. But if it goes off, you know, don't worry. There's not a fire. It's just Byron cooking steak. It's one of those, it's one of those fire alarms, too, that's like, it's not just beeping. It's also saying fire, fire, fire. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just a normal yeah, yeah, fire. Yeah, 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 I've yeah. never heard this in my life. Yeah. It is literally telling you that there's a fire. It's like, it's not a fire. We're going to go to work. Relax. We're, we're, we're just making a steak, okay? All right. Strain, strain, strain. Us. Get off as much of that water as you can. Directly back into the pan. Also, we're going to, off the heat, get our bechamel into the pan as well. Okay. And guys, your bechamel might have gotten a little thick on you. That's okay. It's always okay. Not that serious. Not that serious, y'all. We're going to get in there, and I'll show you what I have here. OK. Do a little clean up in a second. So this pot um, is a little wide for this job. And maybe you're experiencing the same thing, too, uh, where the liquid is not fully covering the collard greens. We're going to add some water. And that's totally fine. This sauce is super, just super intense and super thick. So diluting it a little bit, not gonna hurt. Not that serious. So if your greens are not fully submerged, you can add water until they are fully submerged? Yeah, just add some water until you get like 90% of them submerged. If those, those ones that are outside of the liquid are gonna start, those are gonna be the first ones to turn brown. Okay. So we don't really want that to happen. Okay. So guys, I've added in this wide pot, I've added maybe 
eight to 12 ounces of water, uh, you know, cup to cup and a half, okay? <laughs> Shall I say it? It's not that serious. It's not that serious. <laughs> it's not so that we're gonna serious. return this to the, to the, to the stove top. Uh, super low heat. If you're on one of these weird, uh, what's this thing called? Induction? Induction burner? I don't know, electric. I would say electric. Yeah, well, it's definitely electric. It doesn't have, it doesn't have a flame. I mean, that's it's plugged in, my guy. That's so why we bring this. It doesn't have a flame here. Even, even though we're not at Ryan's house, we still don't have an actual uh, gas stove. So super dope and awesome. Mags, Magdalena asked how long for the greens? How long for the greens? We're going to let them cook. I don't know. I don't know. Like, honestly, you guys, the way I cook, there's no times. There's no measure. Uh, there's some measurements. Mm -hmm. But there's no times. There's no clocks. You know what I mean? We're going we're gonna to cook to, uh, we're going to cook to instinct. Okay. Something that I learned in the Bay Area. Cook to instinct. Check your ingredients. Check your things that are cooking. Taste them. See where they're at. What I'm going for with these greens is a slightly al dente green, which still has a bite to it. But also, you know, I want them to be, you know, I want them to be cooked right uh, and have the right amount of flavor and seasoning. So the only way to do that is to keep tasting them. Your stove's going to be different than mine. I can never tell you. Uh, how long it's going to take. I apologize. And what temp are we at on our stove here with our... Uh... Um, over here at 816, we're at about a... We're at about a one between low and three. And that's, that's it's, on it the, it's on the large burner setting. So uh, if you guys live in a, you know, post... 1997 no, apartment. No, it's, yeah, it is between the three, you're right. I second guessed you for a second. If, we, if you're living in a slightly modern apartment, which is pretty much after 1997, then it will probably have the same settings. But mine has this large burner, small burner thing, which yours has too, which I don't like that. I don't like all that. We ain't at the crib. You're finding a way yeah, to I feel like I'm still at the crib. I feel like I'm still at the crib. I go to the stove, I'm like, oh my God, flashbacks. Are we still at Ryan's crib or not? Okay. <laughs> Mo and Amber, you guys all right out there? You guys wine glasses full? You guys good? Okay, so the collards are working. I think I think we have to don't we have to pay some bills or something, Chris? Isn't that a thing that we have yes, to Yes, we need to go pay some bills. We will be right back at everything's cool, so don't don't worry don't about it. Don't uh, well, before, before we pay any bills, you guys, uh, let's get our cast iron or our cooking vessel over a super high flame. We're just gonna get it super hot. While you guys watch this, watch me look super awkward and say have a weird voice. Uh, making a beverage for our homies at Forge Gin. Uh, I'm still pretty embarrassed about this, uh, but um, we're going to play it anyways. And uh, while we're waiting on that to finish, hopefully it just finishes very fast, you know. Uh, and we're going we're gonna to have our, our pan on the heat. Uh, we'll see you guys in just, just a second. What's good, y'all? Chef Byron Hughes from the Last Supper Society. And today we're making triple citrus gin and tonics. The math over here is super simple. We take the right ingredients plus a little bit of technique. Let's get it. So we're gonna start off with an ounce and a half to two ounces of forged gin. Next, we're gonna fill the glass all the way to the brim with ice. Step three, we're gonna fill this thing all the way to the top with tonic. Now let's finish it up with the citrus. We're gonna take a peel of an orange, a grapefruit, and a lemon and slice them up real nice. Next, we're gonna squeeze each peel over the drink to release the oils into the cocktail. Finally, we're gonna put our peels into the cocktail. I like to get steezy with it. And that's it. The forged gin, triple citrus, gin and tonic. Elevate your cocktail. All right, bills are paid. Shout out Forge Gin, the cocktail gin. Elevate your cocktails, y'all. Byron is Good a gin. famous uh, actor now, as you guys can see. Um, and that only took 200 takes to do. So, uh, <laughs> shout out to Matt Callie for his patience, but uh, Matt we're back. Callie. Thank you, Matt Callie, for your patience. I'm so bad at, at reading, or not even, I wasn't even reading anything. I was just trying to go off the dome and remember the good That's lines why that you're I said. Because he doesn't want to read the lines, he wants to go off the dome. Just doesn't but do everybody out there, are your drinks full? How are, what are you sipping on? How is it tasting? Let us know in the comments. Uh, I want to hear from you guys. What have you guys been doing since, since uh, the last time I saw you? We, uh, we missed you. We've just been straight grinding, steady grinding hard, uh, trying to make this bigger and better for you guys. Um, we're also uh, doing a little bit of COVID safe live 
uh, events right now. So uh, make sure you tap in and follow and make sure you know everything we're doing. Everything's on the website, everything's on the gram. Let's get back to the regularly scheduled program. All right, so let's not set off the fire alarm right let's now. Let's try it. Let's try to not set it off. So I'm really worried about it. I don't want to like blast you guys ears with the fire alarm. So I'm going to do a little bit of audible um, on the way that we're going to cook this steak. Uh, maybe you can follow this as well if you have a super crazy, intense, good fire alarm at your house too. So what we see here is my pan smoking hot. This is, uh, this is on the temperature scale. This is called ripping hot. Ripping hot, okay. It's smoking, it looks very sketchy and you might hurt yourself if you touch this pan. So when it gets to this point, we're gonna open up our Benchotan oil and pour it right in. Just go with all of it, you guys. Okay, can Single, we Single, double, all can, of it. Can we get a little recap real quick? Where's our potatoes? Where's our collards? Where we're not we worried at? about the potatoes. We put those in a long time ago. They're gonna take some time. So let's just let them do their thing in there, okay? The collards have been uh, mixed with the bechamel and a little bit of water and set over a super low uh, temperature. Actually, this is, this is actually perfect, it's steaming. When he so says super low, it's, it's above low setting on this. Super low. Like, above like low. low for me, like normal for me is high. So low is like medium. Normal for me is high. <laughs> Chef temps, like we're at the restaurant when we need to be working with like flames that just get the pan hot super fast. High is probably uh, super high for you guys. Uh, medium for me is about a high for you guys, and I would say it's low for me is, you know, around, you know, above low. Okay. Okay. So I've got my oil in the pan. Uh, I just lost some temp because I was talking to Ryan. That's okay. Um, so I'm gonna get a little bit more uh, temp going on in the pan. The pan should be nice and hot, ready for a sear. The goal here is to create a super solid sear on at least one side of these steaks, guys. So find the flattest part. Um, preferably an exposed one. So if you look at this steak, you'll be able to see kind of the darker part is where it was uh, seasoned. And again, guys, we sous vide these steak for uh, about four hours at 129 degrees. So these steaks are fully cooked through to 129 degrees. They're about medium rare uh, as we stand. This is what medium rare looks like. I know it looks crazy. So all we need to do right here is achieve a sear on all the sides. So try and find one of those cut exposed sides, the one that's lighter than the darker side. And let's get them into the pan. I told you guys to use tongs because I don't want you to hurt your fingers, but I'm gonna use my fingers because this is just what I do. So we're gonna put it in the pan. I'm just gonna kind of drag it around. Drag, oh, drag it, drag it. Make sure it's not sticking, yeah? And then give it a little bit of pressure down. Next one, drag it. If this fire alarm goes off, I apologize, but. Drag it. If you're wondering if I feel any pain when I'm doing this, I don't. My hands uh, have no feel. Last How one. much oil do we have in the pan, Alyssa? All of our um, Bencho Tan oil, all of it. You got about an ounce. I need you to put all of it in there. We need to make sure there's enough fat in our pan so that uh, the steak is not sticking. And also so that you know we can get a nice proper sear and a nice press. We got Chris Swain over there behind the camera. You guys have no idea. He is fanning this uh, smoke alarm like a crazy person. I wish you could see this right now. If you're on Instagram, you have the behind the scenes, uh, the behind the scenes look of what's going and on the, here. That's the director. The whole the director is that's fanning. That's our director. That's how we. That's how we roll over here. All hands on deck. So what I would suggest, if you have a sensitive fire alarm as well, right now what we can do, you guys, is go straight into the oven with it. We can do it. With it. But, eh. I'm, I'm confident right now. I don't feel like it's too smoky. It's feeling all right. I feel like we got a good cross, crosswind going on here. There's a good crosswind going on. Hey, shout out to Good Bottle one time for uh, the wine you guys are enjoying. We'll hear from uh, Chris Sinclair a little later in the evening when we're going to eat to hear about those wine pairings. So please don't drink your whole bottle before we get to that. <laughs> I mean, if you do, then, then YOLO, I guess. But... Um, uh, shout out to shout out to Good Bottle one time. So right now, you guys, I'm over on my burner. I'm at a medium temperature, um, and we're just trying to again achieve a super nice sear. Oh 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 oh! Careful with your greens, guys. That cream will boil up. Thank you to my homies in the back that let me know that that was happening. 
So be careful with it. I'm I, I'm at super low, so again, those electric ones, man. I just don't know how to work with them, honestly. I'm a I'm a I'm a gas and flame kind of guy. Okay, so we're just gonna. People say not to move your meat when you're cooking it. That's BS. Right. You have to. The pan is gonna have different hot spots at different times depending on how old it is, how good it is, how thick it is, okay. all this stuff. So uh, we wanna make sure that we're cognizant of all these different factors. So okay. let's just keep a look on it. Oh, Ooh. wow. That crusty crust. Wow. It's there? We're there on one side in my cast iron. So I'm gonna flip it. See this one? It's looking beautiful as well. Beautiful. Flip it. And again, you guys, this is already cooked to 129 degrees, a medium rare. All we need to do is get the sear and kind of bring it up to temp. So by the time you're done searing all the sides of this steak, your steak will be at temp and ready to go. So again, I'm at a medium heat. I'll let that one go a little bit more. Maybe just give them a little drag around. A little drag about. And I can smell that smoke, that bencho tonic oil. It's reminding me of a grill right now. Mm -hmm. A brat. A brat. A South African brat. I'll move that oil around, that fat around. Uh, sous vide. What is sous vide? Let's talk about sous vide. Why do we do sous vide? We cook sous vide because we can have full control over the internal temperature of the steak. So, crash course about steak temps. People think that medium rare is a look. It's, a, it, it, it's supposed to look a certain way. It's, that's BS. It's, that's not how it works. Medium rare is a temperature. Uh, rare is a temperature. The scale is a temperature scale to let you know how done your steak is. At different temperatures, the steak, beef specifically, uh, the protein structure changes at different temperatures. So okay. medium rare, it's a certain texture. Mm -hmm. uh, the muscle fibers are doing a certain thing. Uh, the fats are doing a certain thing in there. It's gonna give you a certain bite. Uh, same thing, rare, medium, well, it's all different temperatures and we are referring to the internal temperature of it, not the way it looks. So you might get a steak that is red in the middle, but it might have been cooked to medium, medium rare or medium. And you're just slightly unaware of that because of the way it looks, but um, it's an internal temperature kind of thing. So let's just keep searing these steaks. Guys, we're gonna try to get all sides nice and brown. So we're even flipping it like any side that's yeah. flat, any side that's flat, we can achieve a sear on, okay? Any side that's flat can be achieved a sear. Turn this down a little bit because it's getting kind of smoky and burny in here. Check our greens, guys. Make sure they're not boiling over like mine. Maybe give them a stir. And at this point, because I added some water to mine. If you guys added water to yours as well, now would be a good time to uh, take the lid off so that we can re-reduce it um, and get a lot of that water out and cause it to thicken a little bit. So I've turned it down, even, you know, kept, actually kept the, the temperature about the same, uh, but I've taken the top off so that it'll start to reduce instead of keeping all that steam inside and causing it to um, uh, retain that moisture that we're trying to get rid of. Okay. Nice sear, nice sear here and I already know mine are going to be ready for me to cut so I'm going to take them out to rest and we will talk about resting in just a second. Nice, nice, nice. Do you have any more steps on here? What else you got? Oh, they're looking pretty good. Okay, so if you guys want to go past, uh, past medium rare, which is again what the steaks have been sous vide to. Um, the trick for that is to literally take this whole pan and put it in the oven. Uh, what that'll do is instead of burning the outside of it, it'll cook it uh, with 360 degrees of heat as opposed to just one directional heat. And it'll cause it to cook, just cook a little bit faster and cook all the way through. So if you are looking for a well done, I suggest putting your steaks at this point into the oven. My steaks, Got a nice sear on one side, and I don't want to go too far with these, so I'm going to take them out. And what I want to do real quick, though, is uh, check out what Mo and Amber, our guests, our dinner guests for the night, are doing right now. Do we have, yeah, do we have them? Yeah, let's see what's popping let's with them. Let's see Yeah. Okay, and what are our steaks doing now? We got the steaks resting now, right? Is that what we're doing, B? Resting these steaks? 
Steaks got a little sleepy. We got to let them rest right We're now. Resting. We're, We're resting. resting, you guys. This is one of the key parts of cooking a steak. I cannot, I can't stress it enough, Mr. Royster. Rest your steaks. Take it out of the pan, let it sit for at least five minutes. What happens when you do that is the, uh, the juices, what causes the steak to be nice and juicy, uh, they start to cool down a little bit. They become uh, le less viscous. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Less viscous? Let's go viscous is thick, right? Yes. Viscous is a is, sorry, I mean, yeah, yeah, thickness, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we want it to be less viscous. We want those, those, those liquids inside, that, that juice that we call the juice, to cool down a little bit and be less uh, fluid so that when we cut the steak, it doesn't just run out all over our board. We want to keep that stuff inside of the steak as much as possible. That's what resting it achieves. Okay. If you guys saw Mo and Amber, uh, and you saw they're in a little bit of a different location. They are now on the rooftop deck of H16. Well, they will be served dinner. This beautiful meal that Byron is cooking, cooking for right them. now. That is going to them. That will be served on the rooftop with a beautiful view of the city. Um, they got their wine. They got their cocktails. This is an amazing experience, you guys, uh, that everybody will have, hopefully have an opportunity to experience if you guys tap in and don't sleep. Don't sleep on those spots, y'all. Don't sleep. Okay, steak's resting. We can check other stuff now at just about an hour here. Let's see our potatoes, our potatoes. And to check these, I'm just gonna give them a little squeeze. Feels good. Luckily, we have these small ones. I'm actually kind of glad now that we got these small ones because they the, cook fast. The big boys would've took all night. Big boys, big boys would've taken all night, you guys. So let's get this out of here. Remember when I tell you guys I have new features? I just want to play with some of them right now. Here's one of them. Bruh. This guy has been geeking out on these. I've, like, I've, I spent about six hours day. straight doing this and just putting this on my phone and designing it. What about a little bit of... Well, I'll, put, I'll do that one when I, when I finish the dish. <laughs> and we have a little bit of fan for it. Okay, so uh, my greens are looking great. I'm gonna give these a taste. Against better judgment, I'm gonna put this hot stuff in my mouth. Taste your food though, you guys. Blow on it a little bit, but taste your food. Make sure it is how you like it. This is for you guys, this is an experience for you guys. How are yours, Chef? Mine are perfect, perfectly cooked right now, actually. This is exactly where I want them to be. I'm gonna take them off. And we haven't added any seasoning to this, so right now we can go ahead and add a little bit of salt, if we could find the salt. There it is. I'm gonna do a Are we little done with this burner? One and a half. Woo. Oh yeah, thanks, bro. You could have just turned it off. You know? I could have. I didn't know if we were done or not. That's how we know Ryan doesn't read the instructions, you guys. It's not my job. <laughs> it's not my job. All right, greens are nice and cooked. They're still green. Shout out, uh, shout out, aunties for that. Still cooked, or uh, still green, which is a good, good position to be at. Steaks ready. Potatoes are ready. I'm going to grab these and place them on my cutting board. They are hot as H-E double hockey sticks. Um, so maybe uh, use some tongs to take these apart. So I got my tongs here, I'm just gonna peel it away. And the feel to the potato should be, it should be soft. Should be, you should be able to squeeze it and it's like soft, it's done, it's cooked. Okay, open it up. God, these things are so small. Cute. Cute little cute. potatoes, aren't they? Nice. There's one. And the smell from that, that laurel, that bay laurel is just amazing. And here's this one. So not as graceful as the last. What, what happens if somebody's potatoes are still hard? Just leave them in? Leave them in. You gotta leave them in. Your steaks are gonna be fine. Let them rest. Uh, but as small as these are, you guys, at 425 degrees, I can't imagine that they're not um, fully cooked yet. But if they are not fully cooked yet, leave them in the oven. They'll be done soon, I promise. Okay, potatoes are out. Beautiful. That bay laurel smells crazy. So, um, I told you guys to watch along for this technique. Um, and we will do it together. 
So if your potatoes are finished, please ignore my slightly soiled towel. We're gonna get them into a paper towel like this. And that paper slit towel? side, uh, or excuse me, a uh, okay. kitchen towel. I was just, hey, I was I, just thank thinking. you, Mr. Worcester. Let me just have a little sip here. Yeah, reset yourself. Reset. God damn, that's good. Okay, so towel. We're just gonna kind of take the end and smash it. I'm going like this and smashing it together. And we're gonna expose that inside of that. So are we using a towel for, the, for controlling the heat? On just, our hands? Yeah, so just so we don't burn our fingers. Okay. Even, even for me, guys, I, okay. I gotta use a towel. This, this is just too hot. And just kind of take those ends and just press and try and make a diamond shape. It's okay if you kind of mess it up. It's fine. It's not a big deal. It's not that serious. We're good. Next. We're almost done. We're about to go to the plate. Okay. Pretty soon. Pretty soon. Next up, we'll get some of our butter. And you guys, when we go to the plate, we, we, we did not ever forget about our boy, uh, Chris Sinclair. So we will talk about the wine soon here. Um, we'll we'll talk about part? the wine soon once we uh, start getting to the plate here. We'll talk about the wine that's paired with this amazing uh, meal tonight. Should we do it now? You want to do it now? You guys want to do it now? We, got, we can go. We have hey, let's bring Chris in. Let's, 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 get, let's, get, let's, get, let's get Sinclair. Let's get Chris in. Let's talk about this today. wine before we uh, get this potato popping. I'll go ahead and put Fallout Boy into my ear real quick so I can hear him. Yeah. Let's bring the Fallout Boys and see what's up with Chris. I don't know Fallout Boy. You don't have Fallout Boy? Maybe I do. Nice. I, uh, I missed you. I'm, uh, I'm going to roll with the Chef Boy or B title, though, so you're just going to have to deal with that if Chris, one. If Chris isn't ready, it's OK. We got it. Let's let Chris do his thing. Uh, we're having a little trouble with these things we call fallout buys that like to fall out of our ears, so we can't hear him. But we'll let Chris do his thing. Chris, tell us about the wines. What do we got? Yo, yo what's up, guys? Uh, so just like always, you guys always surprise me. You guys bought me out of my first red. That longevity cab uh, is delicious. It's a great, really easy, uh, easy going Cabernet. Um, black owned uh, winery out of Livermore. What I really liked about it though is that it's not gonna overpower the, the food for tonight. Um, it's also the packaging is fantastic. That cork just whoop, comes right out. You don't even need a wine opener. Um, but it's really, uh, it's uh, fruity, fresh, uh, with just like a little bit of that tannic back, um, uh, backbone. On top of that, the white wine, uh, the Spanish Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, some of y'all looked at me like I was crazy when I when I suggested pairing a white wine with some steak tonight. But really, that acid is going to cut through some of the sweetness of uh, uh, of the um, the onions, uh, as well as pair really nicely with some of those other spices that, that go along with it, as well as uh, with some of that uh, um, with your vegetables. The second cab uh, that I that I paired with it after we uh, got bought out of the of the longevity is the is the cab blend that goes with the, the Sauvignon Blanc. And that has a little bit of that Spanish Tempranillo, which is that spice that's gonna, that's really gonna cut through some of that spice, but really add add a nice texture and nice flavor that, that pairs well with, uh, with dinner tonight. So I really hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, it's really good to see you guys again. That's our boy Chris Sinclair, always coming with the fire. Always. A good bottle. Uh, cheers to you, Chris. We appreciate you always. You know it wouldn't be a new season of the cooking without our family at Good Bottle. So cheers, and let's get back to these potatoes. All right, guys. So uh, what I want you to do is grab a tiny little device. I'm using a little spoon. Um, and what I want you to do is, in that open side of the potato, just kind of Go in there and just mash it up. Just get it ready for this butter. It needs to be primed for the butter. Go in there and mash it up. I've already done it off camera. Sorry, I got ahead of you. Uh, from there, to your preference, we're gonna add in the butter. Okay. Because I'm a disgusting human being, I'm gonna add about a tablespoon. Because it's freaking delicious. And again, go back in. Mix it, let those flavors mash and mesh together. Kind of bust it up a little bit. Boom, beautiful. Gets messy, that's okay. 
that warmth from it's gonna melt it's gonna melt the butter and it's really just gonna seep into there and it becomes beautiful thing. Yeah, when I bit into this the first day we developed this recipe, I was confused. Me too, man. I was honestly. confused. It was amazing. I, I honestly I've been seeing this miso maple butter thing on the internet recently. Uh, in like the uh, It's a thing right now. It's a thing. It's definitely a thing. Miso maple butter is a thing right now. And um, I would love to share the recipe with you guys if you want it. Uh, but you have plenty to use for maybe the next five to eight meals, I hope. Nobody who's watching this believes you because they've <laughs> all been waiting for, for one, the, what was the other butter? <laughs> oh, the lemongrass butter. The lemongrass butter, they were asking for that. And what else were they asking for? They were asking for the peri peri sauce. Peri -peri sauce. Is, uh, and no one has gotten any of it. No one has, Sorry, has, has gotten any of it. So Recipe writing anything. is not exactly my forte. Then I, that means I gotta go through and measure everything and just do I just need a little bit of time to do that. Uh, shout out to Kate Washington, actually. We might have something on the way uh, in terms of recipes in a collection. Uh, I'm gonna force them to do a cookbook. That's what, it's out there. Right. Forcing them to so, do it. Now the cat's out the bag, guys. <laughs> I'm being forced to do a cookbook, so um, keep your eyes out for that. So I've mixed my butter in nice here. Obviously, I'm making a mess. You guys should be making a mess, too. Let's get these guys on the plate. Butter's in there, bow. Beautiful. Yo, we're going to the plate. Oh. We're going to the plate. We're about to plate up right now. This is the plate up, y'all. This is the plate up. So, A, this is the math right here. We're going to the plate, it's time to plate up. That means we wanna see your creativity. We want you to have fun with it. We want you to get steezy with it. We want you guys, whether it's a masterpiece or a beautiful mess, we want you to do your best plating and then take a flick of it, post it on the gram. Put it on your story, put it on your feed, tag Last Supper Society and use hashtag the cookin. Please do all of that. And the winner of the best plating wins dinner on us for next episode. This week's winner, or from the season finale, is Tasha. So Tasha is in here. She had the most fire plating last time. Um, shout out to our HOF winner, giveaway winner. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, Miss Bold. But remember, whether it is beautiful, it's gonna taste fire no matter what. Yeah. So regardless, get your plating right. We're going to the plate. We got fire plating music to inspire you right now. So uh, get steezy with it. Let's do this. One of those there, one of these guys here. And we can cut our steak against the grain. So we're cutting against the grain here? Against the grain, yes. Against the grain is super important, guys. Look at the way that the grain is going. It's the way that all the lines are going. Cut perpendicular to that. Um, that is going to give us a better mouthfeel. It's going to bite a little bit better uh, when, we, when we sink into it. Um, and it's just, that's just the way we do things. There we go. Guys, if you cut your steak and it's not to where you want it to be, it's not that serious. Uh, it's been sous vide and cooked already, so you're gonna retain a lot of the moisture. Um, so just put it back in your pan and put it back into the oven. If you don't like the cook of the steak, put it back into your pan and put it back into the oven. You can fix this, I promise. We tried to do the hard part by uh, cooking it sous vide for you, but you never know. My steak on the plate. Ooh. And I'm gonna go into this uh, deep bowl with the greens, right? Okay. We're gonna go a separate plate with the greens? Yeah, we'll go separate. The cream collards. All right. Mine got a little hot, so maybe they lost a little bit of that uh, green. Go all the way and these greens are green. They're not brown. 
There's some brown ones in there. Okay. I would have liked them to be a little to bit more green. Up. I tried to hide you up. Yeah, you know, I can, I can, I can, I know where my faults are at, you know? Okay. But it's all good. We have the, we cooking at the crib. We cooking at the crib. It's not my crib though. It is a crib. Almost Ryan's crib. <laughs> Let's garnish. Almost we're almost in Ryan's crib because we're we're at an empty apartment, <laughs> literally, with nothing. Found a way to hate. And we still have more than Ryan's crib. Every piece of equipment that I need is here, except for the strainer. My crib is cute, y'all. Crispy shallots go on top, guys. Use all of them. Whatever. Love it. Beautiful. Garnishes. Chives. We're going to load these potatoes up with chives. They want it. Beautiful. Nice. And finally, that bry spiced finishing salt. Woo! We're just gonna hit it with that our Zulu whoop. Hit our steak with that bry spice seasoning salt. And try not to crush it too much in your fingers, guys. You wanna leave some of those big chunks. I feel like your, your height is a little My lower. height is a little different on this one because I'm, I'm like kind of spot seasoning on this. Okay. I wanna make sure each piece is, has a certain amount on it. So I am yeah. going a little bit closer. Yeah. And I'm also trying not to have these uh, big crystals break. Okay. Right. We call it? I think we did it. Can we get a little pick of this? You got your phone out? And can we get a round of applause for this? We did it, man. I think I'm gonna take a pick. Let's take a pick. Can we get a round of applause? I'm feeling, I'm feeling proud. We're doing it. We did it. There it is. There it is. The Bry Spiced uh, Cream Co Beef, you guys, with the uh, big Japanese sweet potato, maple miso butter, chives, uh, and then we have the, obviously the creamed collard greens, uh, crispy shallots, cauliflower bechamel, I'm out of breath because it's been a marathon these past three days and bon appetit. Chef is Chef uh, Matt is going to come grab this. Oh yeah, this and needs take to go it up. up to our guests who are dining on the rooftop. Um, we will check in with them in a second. You guys start eating um, after you have taken your pictures. Make sure you guys post, post, post. We want to see it. We want to give you guys free dinner also. Um, so make sure you guys post, make sure you tag Last Supper Society, make sure you use hashtag the cook in, make sure that you have an amazing night, make sure you're sipping on something beautiful. Uh, shout out to True Laurel, uh, Nicholas Torres and Chef Jeffrey Davis. You guys are so dope for this collaboration. Um, shout out to Good Bottle and the whole team out there, Chris Sinclair, the wine pairings, the perfect pour uh, tonight uh, was amazing. We're going to vibe for a little bit. We're going to check in uh, once our guests get eating upstairs on the rooftop, but we're going to be kicking it right here. We're going to have a little bit of music playing for you guys. Um, we don't get to eat as we normally do because our guests are eating the food, but uh, it's because we love you guys. So we appreciate the love. Thank you guys for tapping in with us. We are back and this is just the beginning. We have amazing collaborations with some of the best restaurants, chefs, food, food and beverage folks around from SAC to the Bay Area. I'm telling you, this season is a labor of love that we really put our whole hearts uh, into and it's all for you guys. Thank you for your support. Um, keep rocking with us, we're gonna get better every week but we are bi-weekly now we oh, are yeah. every other saturday we need to make it known we need to make it known we're every other saturday uh you guys enjoy your meal we love you guys treat every meal like it's your last that means what you're putting into your bodies what you're cooking those ingredients and how we creatively uh prepare those ingredients and it's about who you are sharing food with who you're breaking bread with and the amazing conversation that comes from those gatherings is where the magic happens. Uh, thank you guys again. We are Last Supper Society, Ryan Royster. Byron Hughes. And that's what it is. This is the cooking, season three, episode one, South African Steakhouse collab with True Laurel. The whole whoop-de-whoop. -whoop. We sip it.